Okay, I'm in here at the mill this morning, uh, Saturday morning. Uh, it's ghost town. Uh, there's not a lot going on because the weather and everything been raining wet. So we don't got a lot of extracurricular activities going. But today I want to hit on this, uh, the gray grinds out of the hog. It's getting too fine. Our mulch is getting too fine. The screen is getting, I'll tell you that, I don't like it. That's a little too coarse here. Coming from pallet. But not much. But this is too fine. So, what's going on is, those of you that don't know, some of you's new from Bucking. Thank you, Bucking Army, for sending your uh, uh, troops over. Uh, appreciate that. And all of you new to this channel, I hope I don't bore you all to tears. I hope you all kind of like it or or whatnot. Uh, I, try, I try to do my best, but I got a lot going on. I don't do the best. I can't cater to YouTube as good as I should. But... Here's what's going on. We've got this chipper. All our off fall from the sawmill comes down this trough into the chipper. And we we make colored mulch is what we make. But this is our main, this is our wood that we go over, take across the road and collar, okay? So this is our finished, this is when the piece sizing is done. And now also let's put the coloring on it. First, chunks like this, chunks like this. This has got some sawdust in it, but big all fall pit here pieces like this this are big pieces you know when you open up a big fat round log you know you get these pieces well they go through this first and this is a chipper it's got knives and stuff in it and it makes chips drops down in the basement down here down in there, I don't know how well you all can see down there, but it drops down to this conveyor chain and then heads up this conveyor chain, drops down into this hog. It's a Montgomery hog. Chipper's a full gym hog, it's Montgomery. Drops into this hog for its final size. And then after it's done, it's pushed through this screen. We're gonna pull the screen out, you'll see it in a minute. It's pushed through that screen when it finally gets all the pin chips and everything out of it. And it drops down here and then heads up this conveyor and dumps on that leveling auger. Now that auger just spins and as material drops on that auger, that auger then transfers it out till it falls off the end of the pile. And it just keeps growing out till you get the end of the auger. You either gotta get it hauled off or cleaned out or whatever. So this is the material it's making. It's a little too fine, I'm not happy with it. Making way too many fines. So to combat that, now our screen's getting old. The screen we had in it was an inch and three, inch and a half screen, baffled screen. They call them, I'll show you, I'll show you, I'll talk to you about this screen here in a minute. Let me pull, let's get this thing pulled out of here. These are inch and a half circles in this hog, in this, uh, these are inch and a half circles, okay? The product comes through these circles and then comes out. What, what we're gonna do is, that we've done this before, but you racetrack it. And what that is, you take this circle, this circle, you cut the center out, and it make like a racetrack. You go over this one and do it. And you go on down through making racetracks, and then the hog can breathe. Now it'll send out a little bit bigger pieces, but not a lot bigger pieces but we need bigger pieces. And it's on a regrind, and chances are when you're regrinding and you're hitting a baffle, you can't hardly mess up. So that keeps your pin chips down and, and it does you pretty good, so. All right, I got the first four rows done. And that's what we got going on. Now we gotta get the rest of the way around them and we'll button her up and dry it out. Okay, I got everything racetracked. Uh, here's my top row. Uh, there, see it, gone. But here's my issue. I got some boogers on the inside of it, but I got big blocky teeth on this thing, but they're new and I don't want to ding them.
Our big deal here on this channel is anesthesia. It's good stuff. Put a little bit on your toast in the morning. <laughs> got one problem somebody dropped a hammer down here it's all the way in the bottom the handle sticking up son of a biscuit and i gotta fit my fat butt through this little hole <laughs> oh man i'll let y'all watch because this is going to really really suck oh oh Everybody's clear. We're gonna hit the button. Okay, we got the LC automatic. All righty, that's on. That valve's on. All them valves are on. I just gotta make sure all the valves are on so that the air can come through there. That valve's not on. Okay, here we go. Here we go.
not the chipper, will it? takes it all the way down to a stop where that chipper lets off it just it just throw you know it's just throwing current the opposite direction and the current's fighting it down we shut off all these utensils
holds it still. Kind of like a trans brake, you know? All right, another job I had to do on Saturday here is get these laser lights right. You all tell me what you think. Are them laser lights on or not? Boy, that is right there. I put them right on the inside of the blade, so when you decide where your defects are, the blade cuts right on the outside of it. All right, let's check this other one. Oh, that's pretty daggone. Ooh, that's right on the money. Yeah, what do y'all think? Some of us are right on. Yeah, boy, we got her. We got her, buddy. Pull that stick up. I heard everybody. Hey, <laughs> oh. Now we got to tighten up the belts on the chipper and the hog. <laughs> oh, bless America. I'll tell you one thing I always learned the hard way. If you're adjusting these motors to uh, tighten your belts up up here, always lubricate your uh, doodad. Never screw your doodad dry. So take your little, little wet, put you some little wet on there, driver. I don't know why this won't focus. It, the camera's bad as I am, won't focus. Mm -hmm. Always, never do it dry. You know, need something. You know, you know, needs to be wet, wet and wet, boys. That's how far we moved the motor. About here's that straw. About three sixteenths. We tightened her up. Of course, that makes a pretty good difference on your belts. You reach up here, and I think it's plenty tight. Like I said, they wasn't actually squalling when it started. Before it used to. Oh yeah, that's pretty daggone. That's pretty good. We'll live with that. And I'll tell you another thing, and this might just be, you know, everybody's got their own way of doing stuff, so I'm not knocking anybody else's way of doing stuff, but. Oh, bless America. Uno mas, por favor. Okay, so. Hi, uh. I never, when it comes to tight knees, a lot of people like to put an impact tool on there. I never put an impact tool on there. I lube them up good. Of course, I try to move it even, Steven. You know, usually when you're doing a belt pulley, one end of your motor, you got to push back on, the other end motor to pull forward. So there you go, we got two and a quarter. Make them even, Steven. Oh, beautiful. A light two and a quarter, but it close. Probably a lot closer to three sixteenths on that end, but we'll live with it. Ain't good enough for who's for. Good enough for who's for. But I don't use power tools on these adjustment bolts. I don't, I don't I've, I've screwed too many up in my career so far. So, I promise you, I'm not uh, talking out my butt. <laughs> I've stripped them out, driver. So I like to use, I don't like the hammering on the threads on an adjustment bolt. But to each their own. Some people get, doesn't get along fine with it, so. I just don't like doing it. Not after screwing up a bunch of them in my past. Now, use a little common sense. Ow! Both sides! 